For anyone who doesn't know you, who are you and what do you do for a living? What's going on guys? My name is Anthony and I slang uh, dog is Alright guys, today we have our first Beyond the Boardroom video. We've been so stoked to get this channel started and going, but it's been kind of difficult to get like that first guest because we have no reputation behind us. But luckily, I hit up one of my good friends, Anthony. He's like one of the number one dog breeders in the entire world. Like this dude is making more money than anyone else breeding dogs. It's the craziest thing. French Bulldogs in particular, one of the most humble guys I know. Right, he's got McLaren 600 LT. He's got a C8, told me next car. I think, I think he wants a GT3 RS. As far as I can remember our last conversation. So maybe we'll talk to him about that today. But without further ado, let's introduce him. So for anyone who doesn't know you, who are you and what do you do for a living? What's going on guys? My name is Anthony, otherwise known as Envious Frenchies, and I uh, breed French Bulldogs for a living. Second question, what is the most amount of money you've made in a single month and the most amount of money you've made in a single year? Two, 250 in a month. <laughs> That's crazy. And uh, in a year? It's been upwards of over over one, less than five. I'll just leave it at that, you know. And it's been strictly from French Bulldogs. All dogs. And it's all dogs. All dogs. That's crazy. So a lot of people might think about the breeding industry. They might think it's like kind of easy money. What are all the factors that play into creating such a high income in this industry? So with the French Bulldogs in specific, they cannot naturally whelp, they can't naturally breed, so everything is artificial. So what we have to do is we have to artificially inseminate them, we have to collect the studs, and then on top of that we have to whelp the litter. So we physically have to put the puppies on the mom, they aspirate a lot about out of the nose because they have such a short muzzle. So that requires us every two hours to wake up, be with the mom 100% of the time, you know, so we don't sleep for the first two to three weeks, you know, so. That's crazy. It's a lot more complex than really other breeds. And so within that, like, that two weeks where like you're really like taking a lot of care and attention to the dogs, what does that schedule look like from like morning to night? What are you doing? Pretty much I'll stay up till about five in the morning and then my wife will wake up at like seven. So she'll do like the early morning kind of day feedings. Yeah. And then I'll take like the night evening feedings. Dude, that's crazy. I do see always on your Instagram. You're always yeah, up late. Like yeah. you're constantly posting, constantly <laughs> grinding. It's it's crazy, dude. So I've done dog breeding in the past. Like I've yeah. done like Portuguese water dogs. I would sell these these puppies for like like three grand. Yeah. But the Frenchie game is a completely different game. Yeah. So what's the average amount you sell a dog for, and what's the most amount you've ever sold a dog for? The most we've sold a dog for is one hundred seventy-five thousand. <laughs> that's that's crazy. Crazy. Dude. Crazy. And then we sold another one for one fifty. Uh, this guy was actually in federal prison, believe it or not. Um, yeah, crazy story. I guess the average price I would say is anywhere from like ten to twenty thousand. Ten to twenty thousand. Ten to twenty k per dog. How many dogs do you think you're getting out, like in a year? It just depends, and we got partners too. So like everything I have is pretty much a third. So you know, yeah, yeah. if I sell it for ten, I make thirty three hundred roughly, mm -hmm. right? So um, it it depends on how many females we have coming to heat. You know, but I would say anywhere average between like 20 to 50 puppies a year. That's you know? crazy. But the, the studs is where we make the, like the most of our money. Yeah. So the studs, honestly, I look you want to hop into that question because that's yeah. something that people don't understand. Yeah. And when you told me for the first time, I was like shocked. Crazy. Do you mind talking about that? Because yeah. you said studs for the first time yeah. for the gym and I didn't know what you were talking about. So a stud is pretty much like the male dog and we collect them and then we ship out actually their dog semen, right? And uh, people pay anywhere, average price on that's three to 6,000, that's what we charge. I mean, the boys can work every single day, you know? So we've got about 10 to 12 different studs working right now. You know, on average, we have like two to like six stud services a week. Yeah, that's crazy. It's cra it is that, crazy. It's like crazy to me, bro. I heard that for the first time, I was tweaking out. Yeah. How did you get into this breeding industry? And when did you realize like that was kind of what you wanted to pursue? So we bought a French Bulldog and uh, that was about eight, nine years ago. And it was our very first dog, you know, for since I've been a kid, 
My mom's on Beanie Babies, Pokemon stores, all yeah. kinds of stuff like that. So it's always been in us to kind of have like a side hustle type thing. Yeah. And then once I started seeing the amount of money people are selling dogs for, back then they weren't selling for as much. You know, they were 7,000 was a high end and 20,000 was crazy. Right. But still I'm seeing 20,000 on a dog and I'm like, that is crazy. Yeah, that's nuts. So we just started investing. We got another dog shortly after my mom was like, you're dumb. She didn't want me to spend all my money. So she yeah. bought a stud. We partnered up, and then from that point, five years ago, we partnered up with my uh, partner Aaron, Texas Elite Frenchies, yeah, yeah. and since then it's just been uphill from there. Yeah. So initially buying that dog, you you didn't even mean for it to be an investment, or you did? Getting nah, into it, you're like, I'm gonna one, the dog. The first one was a pet. They literally fixed him before we even took him home. Really? Yeah, then I was like, we love the breed. Yeah. I wanted English, my wife wanted French. We went the French and then we stuck with the French, you know? Yeah, that's so sick. Getting into it, like, the prices were low on most yeah. of the dogs. It was like average low. And now, I mean, you're selling dogs for hundreds of thousands of dollars. So how did they get that high? Because I know you've talked to me a lot about like the yeah. different DNA switches and stuff like that. Yep. So back then, DNA wasn't really a thing. Right. You know, blue was the craziest DNA they had. Mm. As time went on, DNA has been evolving, 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 which is still happening today in this time period. So. The DNA that you could sell for crazy money this year, next year is going to be depreciated. However, there's always new DNA. So right. as long as you keep that new DNA added in, uh -huh. is how you kind of stay relevant and make the most money, I guess, from breeding yeah. the dogs. And you've talked to me about like you've been able to create like new DNA yeah. that just had you pop off. Yep. Yeah, King Kong. King Kong was like the biggest. He was a fluffy at the time that carried this DNA called Isabella. Uh -huh. So he was able to produce Isabella fluffies. And no other dog was able to do it at the time and either you wanted fluffies or Isabella's. Yeah. I was so heavy on the fluffies because I was like, those are cute, it's actually right, yeah. different. And the, you know, they're yeah. soft, they're cute, they're cuddly. So I went the fluffy route and then I seen that dog with the Isabella, paid 50,000 for him and uh, that was the best thing I ever did. That's awesome. So what is the biggest risk you end up taking in your whole career? So based off the last thing I was talking about, King Kong, I guess it would probably be the biggest risk we took because at the time nobody was selling dogs for 50000 like 20000 was like a crazy price. Mm -hmm. He was a black dog, nobody wanted to use a black dog right. and uh, 50000 was a lot, you know, so my partner didn't want to do it. Yeah. I was so adamant on doing it, I told him, I said, I'm doing it with you or without you, I want you to be included, but right. if you're not going to do it, I'm doing it, you know. At the time I had a corporate job, I was an insurance broker. Yeah about four or five years ago and uh it was just so stressful because they never gave me my raise you know and so i was doing the dogs i was doing the insurance it's working from home so it's pretty easy right had a stable income but the dogs started progressing so much we were making so much money from the dogs i was only able to put two three hours a day into corporate right and i was still selling way more business than everyone else at the time it came to a point where i saved up six months worth of money for bills yeah and I said, I'm done, I quit. I just quit my job. And from that day forward, that would probably be the biggest risk I ever took because right. I gave up all of my bill money. I only had six months worth of pay at the time. Yeah. And I figured it out. You know, at that point, the hustle kicked up and yeah. uh, you know, I put it on overdrive. Do you have any advice for anyone in a corporate job right now, but they're looking to get out? They're looking to like pursue something else that might not, they might be more passionate about? I think the best thing to do is start doing something you're passionate about, start making money from it. And like, at least if you could save six months and your, your side hustle is at least making close to or the same as what your corporate gig is making, yeah. then you can make that jump because if you can devote 100% of your time as opposed to 50-50, you're gonna be able to do so much more with your life and with your time. And you'll end up spending half the time doing what you love to do, making more money than doing working for someone yeah, else that totally. you hated doing it, yeah, you totally. know? So I think the best time to do stuff is when you're young, in your 20s, before your 20s, before your 30s, yeah. you know? Because once you turn 30, man, you're kind of set in where you're going, dude, and your life is kind of already in the trajectory and the path that you're trying to go. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't mean you can't change it, but it's harder to change it, yeah, you know? So take the risks while you're young, you know? And a lot of the time, they're gonna pay off. Dude, Come on, mommy. crazy. These are... Come on, mommies. Some of these are fluffies, I guess. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I mean, that's crazy. So this boy right here is 125,000. This boy was 100,000, the clean one. This one is 150. And then this is our newest one. She was 80,000. 
This little girl right here, let me show you. She's a velvet, so she's a brand new DNA. Yeah, it's called a velvet horse coat Frenchie. Big rope. That is beautiful. We just got her like she's two beautiful. weeks ago from the UK. Wow. A stack of $100,000 dogs. What makes you a standout to the competition in this industry? Um, me and my business partner, you know, we're like Kobe and Shaq, bro. Like, <laughs> not trying to be funny, but yeah. we're just, we're two very hungry, motivated individuals, dude, that won't lose. You know, we just can't lose. We, yeah. won't, we won't take a loss for an answer, you know, so. Um, our dogs are some of the best, you know. We've had a lot of the best DNA out there. You know, so we've been able to evolve and have some of the, the newest DNAs, you know, and we've been able to push those lines, the King Kong line, one of the top three biggest in the world right yeah. now, you know, so. That's crazy. There was just a uh, off the leash media post that came out with like the top 10 bloodlines in the world and King Kong was the head for number three. That's you crazy. Know? So the fact that we have such a big network, we've had a lot of breeders, um, want to buy into our program and want to buy our bloodline you know so um having the king kong bloodline in specific is a very big statue it's a big deal you know in the yeah. community so a lot of the times people aren't going to want to go to the people that used king kong they're going to want to go to the people that own king kong right you yeah know? so yeah i mean that's crazy you 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 got to a point where you literally are top of the industry that you work on yeah like very top and that must be like a surreal feeling yeah it's cool because we got partners all over the world you right. know like we even have a partner in the UK, so uh, Tony, Tony Hill and Joe French, they're some of the, if probably the biggest guys in the UK, but we just started working together because um, we're some of the biggest in, the, in America. Yeah, right. so, like, why not just try to join forces yeah, and make like a- uh, Just a huge empire. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. So how has dog breeding grown your network and how have you been able to use that to your advantage? On the regular, I talk to people from the UK literally every single day. We talk on the phone. You know, I talk to people from, literally every country we've sold dogs to germany we've sold dogs to the uk we've sold dogs to canada we've sold dogs to mexico we've right. sold dogs to i mean there's so many different countries that we've sold dogs to and uh, i guess it's helped my network because i've been able to connect with a lot of famous people you know right. like but for example zeke elliott it's one of my good friends who we talk pretty frequently you know so when yeah, he came crazy. when he came down for the uh to play the Cowboys now that he's with the Patriots, you know, he got me a jersey and everything. So, you know, it's cool, it's cool to have relationships <laughs> yeah. like that, you know. That's so and crazy. I got another buddy that plays for uh for the Vikings right now, Patrick Jones the second, number 91. You know, so he actually just used my stud. He should be having a litter off our dogs pretty freak pretty soon. So he's in the NFL yeah. right now and he's trying to get into the breeding industry. Yeah. That is crazy to me. Yeah, bro. He was playing my, last night. He was playing uh, Sunday night football, dude. He got a couple quarterback hits. He hit Russell Wilson twice, dude. and then he got a good tackle. So that's it's, crazy. It's, it's pretty cool to be able to connect with people like that. Yeah. You, know? you were able to like spread out your subsidiaries that much to the point where like you dog breeding. Yeah. And then you got into real estate. What did that look like? We've kind of done like where we'll buy a house, live there for a year, yeah. buy a different house, rent that one out, pay that one off, and then buy a different house. And we've done that a couple times, you know, where we've been able to pay off a couple homes while living in it, and then move to a new home, and then yeah. we keep growing, you know what I'm saying? But that's how we've done it personally. We've yeah. kind of done it, not the uh, traditional route, but right, we yeah. try to do it just with with what we had at the yeah. time. Just as you you're going I mean? along, yeah. you just figure it out. Just smart investments. Right, dude. exactly. Use your money wisely, you know? Yeah, that's awesome. What's the best financial advice you've ever received in your lifetime? So, to be honest with you, my family was broke. <laughs> we didn't have nothing, so yeah. we didn't really have good financial advice to give, so I've really not received much, dude, but like as I've grown and as I've gone on, you know, some things I've learned is stay within your means. You know, don't don't buy unnecessary stuff, especially right. if it's going to affect your income, you know. So I always think it's smart before you want to buy something crazy, right. have at least six months to a year stashed away of your money, yeah. you know. And if you're going to make an investment when you're young, as long as it's an investment that's actually going to make you money, take it, bro. Don't worry about the risks, right. you know. But if you're established and you are have bills to pay and a house to provide for a family to provide for you know make sure that that investment is not going to bankrupt you and not right. cause you to lose your home and, and your assets and everything you know right. so and if it is make sure you've got some backup asset that can compensate mm -hmm. for the loss that you're about to take yeah, you totally. know? so um for example you know i've got the supercars and stuff you know like 
I've never bought a car unless I've had, I could pay for it cash, right. pretty much, you know? Of course. Because if you can't pay for it cash, you shouldn't have it. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Like the watch, I was kind of forced to buy this yeah. stuff, you know, like my my business partner's like, bro, I got it. Like, I'm gonna sell it or you could buy it. And I'm like, you know what, I put it on and I'm like, oh, shit, I need this. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's so far. But I'm not a big flashy person, you know, I don't really like buying stuff unless I've got a lot of reserves to compensate. Totally. You know, so. Stay within your means. Don't buy things that are gonna, don't try to impress. Don't buy right. things to impress, buy things if you can actually afford them, you know? Right. And, and instead of buying things, make investments and use those investments to buy the things that you want, you totally. know? A lot of people say it's a lot harder to budget your money to the point where you can save $1,000 a month. Yeah. It's a lot harder to do that than it is to come up with a way to make an extra grand a month. Yeah, because it's a lot of stress and time that you take into trying to budget and stuff like that, where if you take that same amount of time and figure out Shit, dude, there's so many ways to make money, yeah, dude. but you just take that time that you're spending towards that and put it towards something that could make you money. Yeah, it's definitely gonna do it. Have you ever been broke before? I know you mentioned you, yep. you have before. Yep. Um, and what was the story kind of behind that? Yeah, man, I was young and uh, kind of got bad into some bad things, dude. And uh, I was actually a homeless dope fiend, dude, like 12 years ago. Um, you know, my older brother kind of Showed, showed me a few bad things, dude, and kind of led me into a really dark path, dude. And so, you know, I was homeless for a little bit, and, you know, obviously I was a junkie. Turned myself into jail, and just a little class B misdemeanor was something so minor. And then sat in jail for two months, got out, went to rehab for two months, and I got out, started working at Sonic. Believe it or not. Then I was like, man, I was really into working out, so I started becoming a trainer. And then as I was the trainer, then I was like, I kept trying to progress my life, right? So then I went into being a corporate insurance broker and then did that for a while. And that was about the same time when I bought a dog, right when I started doing insurance. Yeah. And when I started doing the insurance, I started doing the dogs, you know, the dogs started picking up, like I told you a little bit ago, mm -hmm. quit the insurance and then the dogs continue to pick up. From that point, it went from here to freaking the moon, you know, and yeah. we just, my time, you know, time is very valuable. So having the extra time to spend on the dogs and marketing and all the other stuff led to so much more money. Scum of the earth, yeah. to working at Sonic, you know, a shitty yeah. job, to working at a trainer, which is still kind of Decent. entry level, you know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, out of college kids and stuff. It's not yeah. really like a career for most people. Um, and then I went into like a career choice. And then I was at the same time, I was going into doing something that like I wanted to do. Yeah. You know, because I always had a dream of doing dog breeding for some reason. That's and, crazy. Yeah, like that's crazy. I was just talking to my roommate after I got out of rehab. I moved in with this dude right as I met my wife, and we had a little pit bull at the time. Uh -huh. And I was like, "Bro, I'm gonna breed dogs." Like I just had it in my mind. I was gonna breed dogs. It just was in my mind. I was literally talking to him yesterday. I was like, "Bro, I manifested this shit, yeah. dude. I really did." Uh, but then the dogs started taking off, and then it was like. During COVID, it was the craziest shit ever, bro. I mean, every month we made minimum 100K every month. Anywhere from like 100 to 250,000 a month, every month. And uh, we were just killing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's the time you want to be a little flashy when you first start yeah, making totally. the money, dude. And totally. then it's like, you start realizing that this shit came so fast, it can go just as fast as yeah, it came, totally. right? And a lot of people don't realize that. But for me, I know what it feels like to be a piece of shit. Excuse my language, but I know how it feels. So it, it's led me to a different approach with, with money, with wealth, with stuff like that because it's led me to be more of a humble person. Right, exactly. More gracious, loving, kind. You know, I see a homeless dude, I give him money. Yeah. You know, I try to give positive messages to, even on my social media, to kids, to freaking anybody I see, yeah. I just try to be like a positive influence and role model, whether it's the words I say, the advice I give, what I do for the community, what I do for people, I just try to be, for me, a good person, you yeah, know, because totally. you put good energy, good energy comes, yeah, totally. you know, if you're a negative person, negative things come, you exactly. know, so, um, for me, just being a positive person, yeah. being a positive man, a positive mind, trying to be a good father, trying to be a good husband, trying yeah. to be a good friend, all those things, um, for me, is important, you know, so, the money's cool, right. but, dying and knowing I'm gonna go to heaven and be a good person and I'm gonna be remembered as, man, that was a really kind, gracious person. To me, that's a bigger deal, you know? So, thankfully, by the grace of God, you know, I've been, by being kind and gracious, sometimes, you know, people do take advantage of it. Of course. 
good things always come from it though, you know? Yeah, so, cause yeah, at yeah. first when you start making money, you're like, oh man, it feels good. You almost feel empowered a little yeah, bit. Your ego is bound it, do, it does, it kind of messes with your ego for a second, bro. And you're like, dude, I feel like, you just feel different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's exactly. But you're not. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. You're not no different. And so like, I guess at first I started to feel a little different. I just started to get a smidge of an ego. And then I checked it real quick, bro. And I was like, man, that's not me, one. Yeah. And two, it never leads to good things, bro. Cause nobody likes an So You met me at the gym. There's no way you thought I was rich or wealthy or had money or anything of the <laughs> sort, bro. Cause I don't carry myself like right, that, exactly. you know? Um, and that's kind of how I want to be personally yeah. in my life, you know? Do you think you need college to be successful? kind of a two-sided question um, not everybody needs college to be successful however I personally do recommend college for most people because what college gives you that nothing else the real world is gonna give you is connections there's gonna be someone that you go to college with that's gonna make it it's just inevitable it's, there's no way it won't happen so I didn't do college and I mean I do think it's good for most but not everybody needs it for this last question what does success mean to you? Yeah. And what is the bridge between success and fulfillment? Yeah. So there's different types of success. There's success like, oh, you made it financially, be able to provide for your family. And then there's also the branch of success where, hey, like I want a good relationship with my family and with everybody around, you know? Right. So I've said it a million times and I swear this is true. I would give up all this to have a relationship with my family. You know, right. my mom, my dad, my brothers all that that's way more important to me than the money like because right. at the end of the day that's all i really got you know what i'm yeah. saying i don't have a lot of friends dude so my family is very valuable and important to me yeah. success in my opinion is is all of it put together you know what i'm saying you can be successful in this aspect but then you don't have a good family life and then it's like where's the balance you know right, exactly you're not getting the balance to where you have the good family life good relationships you know you don't have any issues with people but you also have the financials to me i think that makes like a well-rounded success yeah, you totally. know, that's, that's kind of how i guess i see it personally yeah bro honestly that's it for the interview cool is there anything else you want to add man i appreciate you guys yeah, dude. i appreciate you bro this guy's about to go do a crazy cool mission yeah. you know send some prayers for this dude i'm I, I've yeah. always liked this kid since he came in the gym, dude. He's that. got a great, great spirit and a great head on him, dude. I and you know, I, I know you're headed for some great things. Yeah. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Thank you for watching the video. I, I couldn't be more pleased with how the first video went. That was perfect. He answered the questions great. I think we had good questions lined up. Um, and let me know if you have people like in the Dallas area who you think I should do next questions you want me to ask industries you want me to get into um, and anything like that any sort of support helps as well I love you guys so much have a wonderful day Darcy. you know this ain't this ain't no French bulldog but hey, Darcy, sit sit yeah, she tricks. oh she's back she don't do tricks